We know how damaging loneliness can be during the spring lockdown. The Office for National Statistics did a survey about loneliness. 7.4 million adults said their well-being was affected because they were lonely. And those are in very strange times. This is a feature of regular life as well. The economist Norena Hertz says loneliness is a major problem and it's as dangerous as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Her new book, The Lonely Century, coming together in a world that's pulling apart, Marina explores the world in which you can pay a stranger to hug you or even go shopping with you. Welcome to the programme. Thank you, Emma. I thought we could start a conversation talking about your your experience of Brittany, your rent-a-friend companion, because <laughs> some people have tried to come up with some solutions. Tell us more. So in researching my new book, I discovered that there was a website, www.rentafriend, where you can rent a friend. There are over 620,000 friends to choose from. And when I was in New York, I chose Brittany um, to rent her for a few hours as my friend. And of course, you know, I've never done anything like this before. Um, this was an experiment for my research. I was I was a bit worried, you know, is this shorthand for something untoward? But but it really wasn't. I went and met her in a cafe. Um, we drank um, coffee together. We wandered into bookshops. We went into Urban Outfitters and tried on hats and sunglasses. And it was like it was like having a friend, not not an old friend, not someone who you had a history with, but, you know, when you have a new friend who you kind of are clicking with, um, someone who gets your sense of humour and is laughing at your jokes, well, of course she is because you're paying for her. Yeah. But but it's but it's amazing how I was almost not aware um, of the fact I was paying for her and until in Urban Outfitters at the end of our three hours, she turns around to me and she says, that'll be $120, please. Um, and I asked her, who is hiring you? Because obviously there's a huge demand for these services, given how many renter friends exist on the site. And it was really interesting. She said it was typically 30 to 40-year-old professionals, people who had moved to the city, often away from their hometowns, didn't have, were working all hours, didn't have time to make friends, um, build a social life, and were just lonely in the evenings, wanted someone to hang out with, go to the movies with, um, you know, go and have a coffee with, someone just around. And for those people, they, they've got the money to perhaps try and solve it in this way that I don't think anyone would necessarily know about if, if people like yourself weren't maybe doing these experiments. But of course, this is, a, this is a, at all levels of society, isn't it? And it's affecting us at a time where the irony is you can be in touch with people so much more easily. Yeah, absolutely. So... The scale of the problem, um, even before the pandemic struck, 40% of Brits felt lonely often or sometimes, sometimes with actually the um, young, which was surprising in many ways, the loneliest of all generations. So about half of 10 to 15 year olds feel lonely often or sometimes and 60% of 18 to 34 year olds. And the pandemic, of course, has made it so much worse. And there is an irony here because... Yes, in many ways, we are the most connected. Um, we're living in the most connected time in history because of our smartphones. And yet what my research made clear was that these devices in our pockets are actually playing a huge part in why we feel so disconnected from each other because um, we're together and yet we're alone and we're, we've all been guilty of it. I mean, me as well, you know, sitting um, at the table with my partner, um, both of us on our phones, looking at our phones, not present with each other. And there was research done where uh, couples had a smartphone put on a table between them. And even if the smartphone was turned off, And even if no one was touching it, the couple felt less connected to each other and less empathetic. Um, And that's just fascinating fascinating that you just by having it there, even if you're not interacting with it, it can reduce that connection. Yeah, people also smile at strangers less when they have their smartphone with them. Again, not only necessarily being on it. How interesting. Let's talk about some solutions if we can what what could you do or what have you seen that works to make yourself feel better well there's 
so much that we can do. My book is full of kind of inspiring and hopeful examples, but just a few really practical things we can do. Well, back on our smartphones, I think it is really important to put down our phones more and be more present with each other. I mean, literally, is there a basket that you could put your phone in in the evening so that when you're with your family um, or when you're with other people, you're actually with them and present with them? That can make a huge difference. And when we're on social media, um, consciously stay away from voices of anger and division. And, um, you know, because social media is such a cruel medium with over 60% of young British adults having experienced cyberbullying. So I think social media has a lot to answer for, too. I think we can also, um, or we should also, especially now, really do all we can to support our local communities. So shop locally, um, show up at local community events, even initiate a local community event ourselves. It's in these micro interactions, the hello um, at the greengrocer, the how are you to your postman, um, the how's it going to your butcher. These small micro exchanges that we have actually play a huge part in making us feel more connected to each other and less lonely. So we need to do all we can to support our local neighbourhoods. Um, I think we need to smile more. Um, I know it's hard to be seen under your mask when you're smiling but you know crinkle your eyes up it's all in the eyes now yes, all in the all eyes, in the eyes. <laughs> it's all in the eyes um and you know especially in cities where we're prone to rushing go go going you know not stopping not pausing actually consciously do that so if you're walking in the park say hello to someone who's um walking their dog you know, just a little exchange and really consciously think, is there someone in your own network who might be lonely? And if they are, reach out to them, you know, pick up the phone, um, meet them for a socially distanced meeting, just showing someone who feels lonely that you see them, that they're visible can make a huge difference to someone's life. We were doing a, a discussion, we were having a discussion just before you joined us and we'll keep having it ahead of the Prime Minister speaking around leadership and the way our country <laughs> is being run at the moment. As, a, as an economist, are certain countries doing better with tackling loneliness than others? Yes, for sure. I mean, one of the things is there are things, of course, that we can do and should do, but governments have a real role to play here too. And if you think about the infrastructure of community, libraries, youth centres, elderly day centres, all of these since 2008 have been ravaged in the United Kingdom. 600 libraries were closed down um, since 2008. A third of youth centres, people need to have places where they can come together and be together if they are not alone. And governments can play a role there. And if you look at internationally, who's doing the best? Well, it's, you know, in many ways, many of ours now favourite Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, the New Zealand um, leader, who's really, again, showing leadership here. Um, in New Zealand, what they're doing is they're not only, when it comes to their policies, now thinking about kind of the blunt economic metrics like growth and productivity in determining what policies to make. They're also looking at things like how much um, citizens trust each other, how the sense of belonging that people have, and also importantly, how lonely their citizens are. And they're it's using hard, those though, insights. Isn't it post-pandemic, during pandemic? Because a lot of people who volunteer or do those sorts of things normally can't go and do them. Absolutely. And um, that is a real challenge right now. But there are ways that we can get involved and help each other, um, even virtually if we have to. And at a most local level, I mean, in my local neighbourhood, a Facebook group, ironic because I do talk about the dangers of Facebook, but right now a Facebook group did pop up, which helped um, locals get together to help more vulnerable people in our community. Um, so there are things one can do um, online and through Zoom if we can't do it in person. But I'm sure we all can't wait for the moment where we can do more face-to-face -face because we, we, at we, the end of the day, nothing um, can replace the importance of that in making us feel connected to each other. A couple of messages that just come in to catch your eye and my eye. Paul McKenzie says, lots of charities in the UK trying to ensure lonely people have human interaction. I'm part of our local hospice compassionate neighbours scheme where we befriend someone who's lonely would be great to get a shout out. Uh, that's a message coming from Paul, who's in Hitchin. 
There you go, the shout out done. And Ellie says, Emma, loving this discussion about renting friends. I'm definitely up for being paid to drink coffee, go shopping and laugh at jokes. Great show as always. That's Ellie, you might like to be... Do we do it... Is, does it exist in the UK? You said you did it in New York. Yes, yes, it's global. It is global and I have seen it does exist in the UK as well. I'm going to have a look at some of the people people are hanging out with and wondering what's going on there. Have they got a, a, a relationship that's real or one that's just been created for shopping purposes? Um, I mean, you could sort of smile at the solutions, but it is a, it's a very dark and important truth. Narina, thank you for coming to talk to us and with some solutions too, which is what we always like. Narina Hertz there, who has been looking at loneliness, which is all in her book, The Lonely Century, coming together in a world that has, is pulling apart Narina Hertz with her research there. Your messages coming in about this, but also